Well, you know, last year we, we had the crew out and they did a tape delay and the uh, response from our alumni was fantastic. Uh, going live this year and, and uh, one of the first ones we've certainly done here at SU, uh, it's going to be awesome. Rowing lends itself well to, to live video, so I think, uh, you know, should be lots of good shots today. In your 17th year with the program, for those that are watching that might not know a whole lot about Syracuse rowing, what can you kind of say about the, the state of the program? Uh, it's, it's been a good 17 years. I, I feel like I, I probably have about a million gray hairs for, <laughs> for each one of them. Uh, it, it's been a, a fun building project. Uh, we, we've had, as most programs do, we've, we've had some ups and downs over the, over the 17 years. We, we hit a high point uh, in 2012 of finishing fifth in the country. Uh, took a little step back as we sort of resorted our recruiting and whatnot. We feel like we're on the build right now. Uh, the last two years, we've finished the season uh, ranked eighth in the country. Uh, right now, we're ranked ninth and uh, hope we can improve on that with today's racing. Yeah, and already a couple of victories, already some hardware in 2019. What can you say about this group of kids that you've got here this season? It's, you know, the, it's led by, uh, by a group of four seniors who uh, three of them have been in our, our varsity boat for the last three years since they were sophomores, one since he was a freshman, which is a bit unusual. Uh, they've provided the leadership and experience for the group, and they're certainly leading the charge. Uh, we've, we've done some good early season racing. Uh, We've been trying out a couple of lineups here and there. Everything we do, though, builds for our, our Eastern Sprints Championship, which is our league championship, and then the Intercollegiate Rowing Association Championship, uh, which is our national championships in June. So yourself with the men's program for 17 years, changeover on the women's side. Mm. Luke McGee in his first season with the program. What's it been like for you to watch him from maybe afar or even close? Is there a good level of communication between you two as you both try and build up the men's and the women's side respectively? Yeah, I, I've known Luke for a long time and I remind him of this uh, quite a bit. I actually coached Luke uh, in the summer of 2001. I was doing some work for the U.S. national team. Uh, he was just graduating from Brown University and, and was in our selection group. Uh, so I got the chance to, to know Luke then. Uh, I've watched his coaching career develop from there, uh, first at Brown, then Washington, and then with the U.S. national team. Uh, he, he's a fantastic young coach. Uh, I think what I like best about him is he's a little bit of a rowing nerd like me, <laughs> right? So, so we can sit in the office and, and throw ideas back and forth, and, and you know, you're, you're saying them to somebody that, that's not going to discount them. They're going right. to give it a thought, and, and we do that a lot. Uh, we, we talk a lot about our programs and things we want to do, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, I know I've learned a lot from him. Hopefully, yeah. he's, he's learned a thing or two from me. But how much fun is it for you to watch not only the individuals grow, but, uh, but as a team as well coming together? We, you know, we've worked a lot on our, on our team culture, and I think one of, one of the best moments for me is we had a team goal at the national championship last year to get uh, all three of our boats into the top ten. And, you know, the varsity came down the course first and finished eighth, and then our second boat came down and finished ninth. And, and uh, when our 3V was on the course, uh, you know, all of our guys were on the shore watching and making a lot of noise as they came down and finished tenth to to accomplish that goal. And, you know, I think there were a lot of other teams kind of looking at this Syracuse group going nuts over a lower <laughs> boat uh, finish in the race. But uh, that's kind of culture that we've developed. Uh, you know, everybody's all in. Everybody roots for everybody else. And, uh, you know, we like to go out there and race hard and see what we can do. So your best finish as a coach coming back in 2012, you finished fifth, fifth at the IRA championships what's the ceiling for this group in 2019 obviously the end goal is clear what do you think can happen you know that's always an interesting question I, I think part of the trick with today's young people is to keep them focused on the here and now and and you know our guys will certainly tell you that they want to make the grand finals at the IRA you know that's a that's a goal of all of our boats in our program but we, we try and stay away from that and, and try and focus on the everyday. We just try and focus on 
on you know the next stroke and try and make it as, as good as we possibly can. And with that in mind, today a very special moment for you guys, a chance to win your 30th Packard Cup, a trophy that goes all the way back into the early 1900s, 1904, Edward Packard in that stroke seat for the first ever Syracuse IRA title. How much does that say about not only the history of rowing here in Syracuse, but specifically this trophy? Uh, it's an important one. I, you know, I would say it's probably second to the Ghost Trophy in our in our list of trophies. Uh, we're we're excited. Dartmouth is always a tough, tough crew uh, to race. Uh, their their coach uh, is uh, is another uh, young, exciting coach that that has a lot of international experience, and and uh, you know they'll be ready and they'll be racing hard. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everything you've done for this. Syracuse program and good luck out there today. Thank you. Thank you very much.